Howdy, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John Belkowitz. I'm the Chief Technical Officer at Intelligent Concrete. And the purpose of this YouTube video, this vlog, if you will, is to go over the secret of Roman concrete discovered. Looks like I spelled that wrong. The secret of Roman concrete discovered again. And this goes into our series of how to read a technical paper. And I'm excited to go into this newly published paper by Science Advances. Um, but before we get into that, I'd like to go into a quick overview of what we'll be talking about today. So, um, in how to read a technical paper, um, this is part three, four, five of many. Um, what we go over throughout the paper, we take page by page, and what we focus on is the most important thing is why do we care? And at the end of this paper, um, I'll be grading the paper, which is something new to this series, but not only will I be grading the paper, but I'm also going to get into um, how to identify the takeaway items from each section. And, and that's probably the most important thing. You know, a lot of folks in the industry are bashful, shy, or, or even timid or scared when it comes to reading these technical papers. And I tell you, there's a lot of, of, of words in there that are, are tough to understand, even when you have a PhD education. But, you know, with Wikipedia, you can translate these very quickly. And there's a lot of great information in these papers. With that being said, part of what we're also going to do is distinguish shit work from good work. And you'll find that I have a very strong opinion about this paper. And bear in mind, this is one man's opinion. Um, but I want you to be able to, you know, separate the chaff from the wheat. So um, where do we go from here? It's the last piece and that's okay. Now we've got this technical paper. Now, you know, in some cases we're investing 30 to, to $50 buying these papers. And in this case, the technical paper is available online for free. Um, but it's also the amount of time that you'll need to put into this technical paper. And that's something I'm very proud of is that I do something called active reading where I'm tearing this paper apart and hey, I don't read it one time. I read it five, six, seven times before I'm, I'm putting together this presentation. And while I'm putting this presentation together, this vlog, I'm also um, pausing it and going back to the paper, rereading my notes, making sure I understand, looking things up. So um, there's a huge investment to not only getting the paper, but reading the paper. And then the, you know, the ultimate question is what's the return on investment? So where do we go from here? So, you know, strategically, I'm going to do that throughout. You're going to see that. Please post your questions. But at the end of this, we'll wrap it up with a concise summary. Um, and I will give a, a, my, my brutal and unfiltered opinion about this paper, like I do all papers. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. All right, so the paper that we are focusing on today is, I uh, love the title, The Hot, Mechanic, Hot Mixing a Mechanistic, Insight, Mechanistic Insights into the Durability of Ancient Roman Concrete. And shoots and ladders. Doesn't that sound flippin' amazing? Like, I, I, I love... I love the sound of that. I'm a big titles guy, and I love the sound of it. Um, and then um, I, you know, I hang on every single word. So, so I'm going to dive into this here, and uh, I'm going to read the abstract for you too. It's going to be one of those types of presentations. Uh, but the great thing is, it's on YouTube, so you can double the speed, and we can get through this a lot faster. Um, so hot mixing. I'm going to uh, reserve the right to cover that in the, the body of this, uh, this vlog where I go into the paper. Um, so I'm just going to skip over that one for now, but don't worry, I, I go into it in, at nauseam. Um, mechanistic, and that's a pretty tough word to say, 
Um, relating to theories which explain phenomena in purely physical or deterministic terms, uh, determined by physical processes alone. And, and I, gosh, yes, I, I do guess, I, I get that they go into the mechanistic insights to a certain degree, but there's also, um, chemical insights uh, we're looking past the physical and we look at the chemical composition. Um, and the next word, insight. So insight, it has two definitions, and I'm just pulling this up over here. I don't wanna I don't wanna get this wrong. Okay, so two 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 definitions. Um, so the capacity to gain an acute and deep intuitive understanding of a person or thing, a deep understanding of a person or thing. The capacity to gain an accurate and deep intuitive understanding. So the word intuitive means um, using or based on what one feels to be true without conscious reasoning. And man, so we're already starting out, in my opinion, on the wrong foot. And it, it goes on further to say the durability of Roman concrete. And I, I just off the bat, I, my expectations are fairly, fairly high right now when I'm going to get out of this because as a scientist and engineer, um, you know, I'm, I'm receiving different messages. You know, with the word insight, it's, it's intuitive. And when we, we talk about intuitive, it's, Without conscious reasoning, uh, this is instinctive. And, you know, we're talking about science. This is not poetry. So I'm, I'm already having a hard time um, with this paper, and we haven't even gotten through the front door. Now, as it turns out, a lot of these authors are from MIT, and I, ugh, man, I'm of the opinion that that's why this was written. It's a very cool concept, but as you'll see throughout the paper, um, it's wanting for more information. Now, you know, I hate to set the tone like that, but like I said, I got some strong opinions. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. So I, I'm going to hold off on getting into the abstract for now. Um, what I do want to point out is this paper, particularly this paper, is for free. What that means is you have no reason not to read the actual paper. If you're one of those people who's making a decision, and I've had engineers from state agencies, from federal agencies that are moving on this concept because they read not this paper, but the articles, and I think right now there's like 10 or 15 of them that refer to an interview done on this paper. Don't do that. If you do that, you're wrong. You read the dang paper before you start making decisions uh, on, on a lot of money. Now, there's some great ideas in here. Be that as this may, this is a bad paper. We'll get into that here in a little bit. So let's dive into the abstract. So ancient Roman concrete has survived millennia. But mechanic, mechan, mechanistic insights into their durability remain an enigma. Oh, jeez. Here we use a multi-scale correlative elemental and chemical mapping approach to investigating approach to investigating relic lime cast, a ubiquitous and conspicuous material component associated with ancient Roman mortars. Now, okay, listen, I I like this type of writing, but I, I know the different um, editors, editors and chief co-editors out there for the high impact factor technical journals and i could just see them grunting and laughing or i could hear them i personally i think this is great writing i like this writing now this paper to a certain degree it does fulfill this this multi-scale correlative elemental and chemical mapping approach but again that goes against the mechanistic insight the intuitive look at a physical phenomenon because we're doing more than that. Um, and then I thought there was a spelling mistake, but let's just ignore that. So together, these analyses provide new insights into mortar preparation methodologies and provide evidence that 
The Romans employed hot mixing using quicklime in conjunction with or instead of slake lime to create environment or high surface aggregate scale lime casts are retained within the mortar mix. And that is the, the backbone of this paper, that we get some self-healing from this, this, this new secret that's been uh, 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 unraveled in the Roman concrete formula. Inspired by these findings, we propose that these micros macroscopic inclusions might serve as a critical source of reactive calcium for long-term pore and crack filling or post posolonic reacti reactivity within the cementitious constructs. Again, oh, fucking poetic. Um, but they're overstating here. Like it's... Um, as you'll see, they're, they're really focusing on one sample set, and, and that's my problem here, that a, 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 a paper like this needs a lot more um, data to make the, a lot more evidence, I should say, um, to make the leaps that they're making here. And, and this is the last sentence. The subsequent development and testing of modern Lyme class containing cementitious mixtures Demonstrate their self-healing potential. I get that. Demonstrate their self-healing potential. But doing this, thus paving the way for the development of more durable, resilient, and sustainable concrete formulations. Like, holy shit. Like, what a leap to go from, from, um, uh, what's the word? Demonstrates to, hey, let's start using this to, in, in day-to-day -day concrete. Um, yeah, I, I think that's, that's tough to do. So, you know, the takeaway from this is, you know, intuition tells us that the secret to Roman concrete is self-healing from the line class that we integrated into the Roman concrete mix through hot mixing. That, that's the big takeaway from this. And again, I think we should underline the word intuition here. All right, so let's get into the introduction. And, and for those of you who this is your first time seeing one of our How to Read a Technical paper, um, what you'll see is uh, I, I, I like to get into um, the paper itself, and I want you to see the, the active reading that I do and the notes that I provide. So, so you know, let me know your thoughts based on the notes and obviously what, what's going on here, but I wanted to see, you know, what I'm thinking while I'm reading as well as during this discussion. Um, all right, so getting into the discussion or the introduction, the first paragraph, you know, we're taking this tried and true method of demonizing cement uh, and how it's destroying the planet uh, because of the carbon footprint impact that it has uh, from the manufacturing process. And we're setting the stage for Roman concrete is the best, it's better than the rest, and it's gonna save the day and we've discovered how it's gonna save the day. Um, and, and what really chaps me is the, the part over here where they get into because of the proven longevity of Roman concrete. And that's just not true. Um, you can go throughout the Roman empire from one side to the other side and, and see, yes, good concrete, but you'll also see concrete that has been deteriorated to the point that you can't even recognize what the original geometry was. And as it turns out, um, when we're selling concrete, because the impetus of this, this article, it seems like, is to, we've uncovered the secret of Roman concrete, let's use it in modern day concrete, um, for durability and self-healing, that's a tough sell. I, I don't think the secret of this, um, whether people um, um, like the, this article or not, um, is going to be... Um, What's the best way of putting it? Um, it? It's just not what's sold in the industry. 80% uh, of the concrete that goes out the door is residential concrete. Folks who are selling 120,000 to 1.2 million cubic yards a year, they're not convincing their contractors to buy another 10 years of concrete life or another 20 years of concrete life. It's normally how quickly can you get me off the job site? How uh, easy can you make this concrete job site for me and how inexpensive can you make this concrete is, is what they're usually selling. So hanging the hat on, hey, this is all for the sense of durability for modern concrete, uh, it's just a tough sell for me. And, and that's the problem here. I feel like I'm being sold 
with this paper. Okay, so what, of course, they they need to do then is get into the Pozzolanic reaction and how awesome re or the unreinforced Roman concrete is. And only yeah, they do talk about the unreinforced. Um, and they go through the, the pozzolanic reaction and the calcium carbonate reaction. Um, and, and that leads to this is how they got um, this, this, or this led to a more durable concrete, um, including those structures by the sea that, of course, were enhanced by the seawater. Um, but what they're proposing here in this last paragraph, paragraph, excuse me, is that we have this this new discovery of um, uh, lime clasts um, or these lime-based um, aggregates that were hot mixed into the concrete. And what you're going to see is, and this is why, I, man, somebody needs to do a better job of editing this because this definition of hot mixing comes up, I think, like four or five times. Okay, so the next page in the introduction um, what previous research has shown us and revealed about Roman concrete? Because even though the secret's been revealed, um, the secret's been revealed a few times. And we're, we've got another video that we're going to get into about that. Um, so uh, what previous research has been found? And uh, what we're looking at is that the, the durability of Roman concrete was originally attributed to not only this pozzolanic production, this calcium silicate hydrate, but this calcium aluminate silicate hydrate, which has a, a, a higher tendency to be more resilient to physical and chemical phenomena that would cause its sister component's brother, the calcium silicate hydrate, to break down prematurely. And of course, that would cause the 3D geometry of the structure, the concrete structure, to break down. Um, what they're suggesting is, is that we've got these lime clasts and a lime class is basically this, and there's a beautiful, this is one of the things I love about this paper. There's a beautiful illustration of how this lime class self heals the concrete. And basically what it is, is a calcium rich M&M &M that has a hard candy shell, which is a hydrated environment. And we do a whole investigation on that. Um, but when that concrete cracks, you'll see that that calcium, uh, from the inside, that M&M hard candy shell leaches out, combines with a poor water solution to create this self healing, um, concept and self healing. What it means is the, the place concrete has something inside of it that when it fails, um, it doesn't need any other uh, activation behind the failure to heal itself, to bridge the cracked material and uh, or the, the, the cracks, the pores, the cracked connections. Um, and, and when we say heal, it's a very specific word because we could say seal. But when we say heal, it assumes that that bridging material has a strength, has a toughness equal to or greater than the parent material. Now, why this is important that we found this in, in coastal areas is because, um, you know, and, and part of this paper, it goes into the, um, where they got some Roman concrete samples, but um, why this is important is because this is the same kind of area, this coastal areas these are the same coastal areas where back in 2017, another university figured out how Roman concrete survived for 2,000 years. And it was because of the seawater. So, uh, you know, what's more important? The lime class, the seawater? Uh... All right, y'all, we're back to this you know, from the, the, what was discovered back in 2017, we're back to our, our current research and it, it goes back to this, what is a lime class? And I wanted to go into the basic recognition of this, this definition here. And on this page, especially in this lower section right here, we start looking at these polished sections uh, and, and fractured sections from this place in Italy 
where we have these these line classes and you, you can see them and it goes into uh, a lot of different discussion in there a little bit different discussion in there about the the large EDS fracture of the calcium rich uh, aluminum rich sulfur rich so on and so forth so you know I'll, I'll give you some time to do that but what a lime class is it's different from slate lime so slate lime is when we take our lime we calcine it we heat it we cook it um, we drive off the water and we create this calcium oxide. That's very reactive, especially in the presence of water. It wants to become calcium hydroxide. And that's what we call, you know, the slaked lime that then is then ground up. Um, quick lime, uh, it has not been reacted with water. And when we take this coarser ground quick lime and we mix it with water, uh, there's a violent reaction. You'll see. Uh, temperature increases to 300 degrees Fahrenheit within a matter of seconds. It's actually a pretty awesome reaction. It's something that's been taken advantage of um, in the concrete and construction industry for decades now. Um, but what we see here with the Roman concrete, this Roman ancient concrete as they describe, is that when this quick lime was used, whether it was used with pozzolanic materials alone or with slaked lime, it created this lime class, which is this M&M &M hard candy shell or, or this hydrate or this, excuse me, this, this calcium rich nugget that has been surrounded by a calcium aluminate silicate hydrate, which is what we found in previous research and we're finding now. And, you know, in this research, we dive into it. We look at the interfacial zone into the calcium rich environment um, and, and uh, you know, into the body of the, the hydrated matrix or the hydrated uh, pozzolanic and, and um, lime matrix. Um, so I, I, I do like this paper and you'll see the grade that I give to it um, because of how they go into the illustration of the lime class and and from there, how it gets into self-healing. So I, I do like this, this paper for that. It does a really nice job. Um, one of the things that it also goes into in this section, it's, it's very quickly and it goes deeper into it later on, is the different uh, scenarios for the lime clasts to exist. So you have a complete overburning uh, during the, uh, uh, the calcining of the lime. So uh, an overburning, I guess, would mean carbonation before concrete preparation, and then a, a insufficient mixing of the mortar, incomplete dissolution during setting. So, you know, I, 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 I'm guessing here um, that we're talking about the different types of lime that can be created that will eventually end up in the the mortar that makes up our conch, Roman concrete composite that was before it was introduced it had a certain uh, potential for um, this lime class to exist and the more uh, overburned it was the more calcined it was with as little impurities the more likely it would be to create this lime class um, what this section also goes into, I mean, man, this is just chock full of information, um, is the, the types of calcium carbonate that can be found in and around these lime clasts. And, and it goes into the three geophases and the combination. And I, I really think that this is something that you should get into and even talks about the, the calcium aluminate silicate hydrate. And I, I really like it because it it does set the stage for um, the next two sections, which you know take apart these samples from Italy. Um, you know, going into a deeper dive into the the elemental breakdown of mass species. But anyway, that that's that's getting ahead of it. Um, so you know, this paper is is well broken down. 
and I, I do want to like this paper. You can almost hear it in my voice, and I, 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 let's just go into the next section. So the, the research significance of this paper, you know, was discussed in the last section, um, you know, in some detail where there's been a lot of research done on these lime class on this, you know, the maritime shores where the Roman concrete, but little research has been done on, you know, concrete samples taken further away. Um, and there is going to be a lot of referring to some of these other concrete samples, uh, some of these fresco paintings um, that are using the same type of material. So th there is going to be reference to that. Um, but, you know, the, the takeaway from this section is there is a comparison to this Privernum um, concrete set of samples. And... But what we're going to do here is use a multi-scale analysis to identify these lime class as a contributing factor to the increase or to the extension of service life. And this is through self-healing. Um, I, I do want to point out that one of my biggest problems with this paper is that we are only analyzing one data set. I don't, I don't care how many times we look uh, through the sample, that's you know just establishing our percent error or standard deviation. Um, but when we say that we discovered the secret of Roman concrete, this is where my problem lies. You, you discovered something. There, there's no doubt about that. And these are, I'm talking to the authors now. You've discovered something. Um, but to, to say this is the secret of um, is a gross misinterpretation of the data that you have in, a, a collected, the discovery that you went through. I mean, we're, we're talking about the largest empire uh, in the ancient world. Uh, 50 to 90 million inhabitants, 20% of the world occupancy at the time. It has a, a size at its peak of five million square kilometers. I, you, you, you looked at a, a, a micro needle in a giga haystack. I think you discovered something, but I, I think we need to dial it back a little bit and do a lot more research and hey maybe make it a trip throughout you know the roman empire you know pick more than one point you know n equals 10 is what we all learned in school um you know and with that um i i, I do like this this testing analysis this and i said this multi-scale analysis and i i wanted to um you know go into a little bit more detail using large area scanning like my electron microscopy for topography of these samples these lime class in the fractured state is fantastic more so in, in the scanning electron microscopes you also have this energy dispersive x-ray spectroscopy um, you know capability which basically you can pinpoint line point square area average what your elemental species is and then you'll see these these ternary um, diagrams that they create to look at where the collection of these mass species are. And they, you know, I, I think they look at silica, alumina, and, and um, calcium. Um, then what they look at is they also use backscattered electron microscopy. For some reason, I'm not, I'm not uh, including that in here. They do take powder samples and I did have a little bit of a problem with the powder samples, and we'll, we'll go into that. But I, you know, using X-ray diffraction to do a compositional analysis, awesome, and and Raman imaging, they use that to to look at what was it the, I think it was the the calcium carbonate content and the quartz content, um, and you know that's something that they get into is the different type of calcium carbonates. And, and how that gets back to the relative humidity of the curing environment, which is, again, one of these, you know, artistic hand wavings or, 
or mathematical hand waving that they're doing here. Anyway, so they 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 say that they're using this to address unresolved questions. Um, which hey, there's a lot of questions about Roman concrete. We don't know um, all the formulas. We don't know all the methods. There's a lot of ambiguity when it comes to the translations, and there are a a, a lot of them. Uh, there's a lot of research done, and my you know the straw that broke the camel's back for me. And I I know one editor in particular who would not publish this paper. And hey, this is my opinion what this editor would do, but it's because of the sense. The results of these analyses provide compelling evidence for hot mixing of Roman mortar. And this goes into the, the using quicklime instead or in, in addition to slake lime. Like needle haystack. You, you, we don't know that. You... You know, making a general statement based on one finding, it's an irresponsible thing to do. And, and that's my biggest problem. So it seems like the purpose of this research, and I, I'd like to, you know, get into you know, the paper itself and look at it piece by piece without, you know, falling back on that. So the, the paper, the purpose of this research is to identify these lime class as a lesser known tool in the Roman concrete durability toolbox. And this goes back to the lower part of that introduction now. What they say is that they're unraveling the mystery behind these lime clasts, these, these physical and chemical composition, which, you know, it's, it's you know, it's sort of a, a disagreement with the mechanical insights that they're talking about in the title, because they are looking at mechanical composition. What I, I dislike about this is that they they shoo in this concept of leading to a change in the state of the art and practice to increase modern day concrete durability and life use. Now, I'm not saying that this is not a potentially great idea. Um, this is not a, in my opinion, this is not an I'm not an expert on this type of law, but this is not a patentable idea. This is an obvious innovation of an existing technology, and there are plenty of companies, both stateside and over the big blue pond, that have pioneered this type of practice, method, and material. I mean, back in the day with Lafarge North America, we had a product called um, Blah Blah Blah, and it used a material just like this as one of the key components to reducing shrinkage and increasing durability of concrete. All right, so results. This is where, you know, I, you know, when it comes to the results sections, you, you got to start, you know, waving the bullshit flag or starting to filter. Um, so what I saw here was this discussion about how many samples we took and you know, fractured versus polished, and we looked at it in 10 different locations on these samples. And they go through this sample preparation discussion on the, you know, for the different methods that they're going after. You, you got 15 different samples from one location. You know, that's like taking 10 different cores from one bridge. That's like, you know, getting five different slices from the same loaf of bread. That's not a, a representative sample to make a solid generalized state-of-the-art or state-of-the-practice change. Um, I, I think that, you know, there's some good merit to the, the, the sample preparation. Um, it, you know, it goes into more detail on the backside. Um, and it, and they do go into detail here about the, what they're going to do, you know, the elemental mapping, which I absolutely love, you know, the, the aggregate scale relic line class identification, you know, through polished samples, as well as these fractured samples that listen, they, they do a, a university style research on these M&M &M hard candy shells in the concrete, in the Roman concrete, and it's gorgeous. Um, but my biggest takeaway from this page is, 
you went to one bridge, you took 10 cores. Um, you need to go to more places, many more places. This is the first of many research papers. Uh, yeah. Okay. So figure one, oh, beautiful figure. Uh, it goes over the Roman concrete site where the samples were taken from. And you know, it's, it's important to me because this is still on the shore. I mean, the same thing that we talked about earlier from 2017 you know, how are we, how are we separating, you know, the impact? Um, you know, are we incorporating what happened, you know, according to what was discovered in 2017? Um, and the, the ambiguity that we really don't know why and how, I mean, a, a lot of this is educated guess is what I'm saying. Um, so here they, we go into our first series of, um, uh, evaluation using an electron microscope uh, and we're using two things we're using a, a uh, scanning electron microscope to look at the fractured surface and a scanning electron microscope to look at a polished surface and in the fractured surface and the polished surface they use the energy dispersive uh, x-ray analysis to to look at the elemental species and oh gosh I should have put so what is it calcium is in red silica is in green magnesium is in blue alumina is in darker blue and sulfur is in yellow um, and we can show let's see in letter E which is this bottom right portion it shows aggregate scale relict line class within the mortar the large red features denote denoted by asterisks. Um, so you got these poor bordering rings visible in the SDS that are rich in calcium or sulfur, which are enlarged at right to show uh, additional detail. And talking about additional detail, the next few slides it goes into detail at nauseum, and it's fan for fantastic. Um, so despite centuries of exposure, well preserved around the perimeter. Um, and then they go into origins of the sulfur. And, you know, I, again, I just, man, I, 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 it, this paper inspires me to write a, a very, um, very, very, uh, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Um, not fluffy, but very, theoretical paper on, you know, manipulation of the molecular kinetics of cement hydration, um, which you can write those, but this is, this is doing more than that. This is not theoretical. This is talking about using theory to apply to practice right away. Um, okay, so the next section of the results, uh, review of figure two, this goes into a deeper dive of these Rivernum uh, samples, these lime class, and it looks at samples that are fractured. Um, so we're cracking those samples to look at the fresh surface and versus polished. And with the fresh surface, we can look at this topography, um, but they also use the energy dispersive uh, to look at the, the calcium, silica, and alumina breakdowns. And you can see that here that they use a a, a ternary plot to look at these these same sections. First they do the fractured SEM um, and then they look at the EDS clusters. This is just an absolutely beautiful and in between those A and C plots you have this um, ternary plot that shows the you know what is it oh the the calcium distribution versus silica and alumina. So I mean, it really is, I mean, and, and it's a no-duh moment because when you look at it, that red is all calcium. So we would expect that we have a higher level of calcium in there. But to, to see that, it's just a, a very pretty sight. Now, if you look to the right of that letter A, they go into the polish section where they're looking at those lime class. But more so, if you push all the way to the right, this is probably my favorite portion second favorite portion of the paper. It's looking at the interfacial zone, uh, the matrix, the core, the interfacial zone of these lime class, and it's distinguishing, you know, the, the transition to calcite from calcium, 
um, and then areas where we have quartz. Uh, but basically what it's doing is it's, it's teeing up the, the golf ball to drive it down the fairway for the concept of these lime class as, act as a calcium rich environment that will later be used in self healing. And it's, it's a brilliant way. And the illustrations that they have here, I mean, I, especially that upper right one, I would, I would dive into it a lot more. Um, I absolutely loved it. I, I definitely think the folks did a good job here. Again, I, and I have to say this, I feel like the engineering side of me wants to. I'm, I'm building it up, building it up, but bear in mind, one spot, one spot. You, 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 we need more areas to see if this was repeated. If this is just a coincidence, then, hey, it's a happy coincidence, but to say that the Romans used this throughout, we need more evidence of that. Uh, so yeah, the the two different types of lime class that we see here that they investigate or that they found is the reaction rim or the two sections. Um, and that's what I was talking about. This is my favorite section, this right section, where the reaction rim acts as a diffusion barrier. I keep calling it the M&M &M hard candy shell. Then we have this calcium rich environment. Um, and with that, that's going to be what we use later on for the self-healing. Um, okay. Uh, and they use pixel quantification. And, you know, all this sounds pretty difficult, but it's not that tough to do this stuff. I mean, you're basically taking samples, either cracked or polished, which these folks over here got a third party to do it, which makes it a lot easier. And that's really the hardest part is getting the samples in the right state to, to run these tests because you no know, moisture, they have to be very shiny, they have to be very thin sometimes. Um, so once you put it, you know, get those samples to that state, it's a matter of throwing it in a piece of equipment and, you know, turning a switch on and, you know, tippity tap, tippity type, you know, getting to the point where we need to with certain controls to get these pictures. And then the machine really does the rest and we're analyzing it from there. So we use these ternary plots and these pixel quantification to identify what we have in these different regions. And if we go into figure three, um, here we're, we're doing a deeper dive into the Lyme class again, but now we're using Raman spectroscopy to look at the different types of um, calcium carbonate that's being created in this Lyme class. And we're also using backscattered electron microscopy which is another way of looking at this polished surface. And again, what we are verifying, and this is just using you know, our, our multi-scale approach is you know, the reaction rim with the hydrated rich core, or not core, but, but diffusion barrier. And then of course we have our calcium rich core. And again, we use that ternary pot, that pixel quantification to identify um, where we have and what we have. And here, what are they using? Blue for quartz, R for the, or orange for the resin, the cement matrix is, what is that, purple? Um, and the line class is red and green, and that's for the EDS and the Raman phase maps. And then the backscatter, that's black and white, but with the calcium, it's going to charge more, so that's going to be brighter. Um, and, and that's normally what we see when we do backscattered electron microscopy for cement. It's the unreacted, the anhydrous cement is going to uh, collect electrons and it's going to be brighter. And that's what we see up here. So they, they do a really awesome job um, of illustrating the, you know, and also coloring the lime class from the core to the interfacial zone, the hydrated cement matrix, as well as doing an analysis on the binder at the ITZ. All right, so reviewing a figure four. So figure four, um, so this is a compositional and morphological characterization of ancient and mortar lime clasts. And this is where they, they dive into the potential long healing process. 
um, they're they're looking at this more instead of a microscopic they're looking at this more of a a macroscopic specifically in that lower section where they're 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 shoot at the millimeter letter level at the micron level and they're looking at the lime class but these outer shell cracks that seem to be filled with some type of of gel where these um, lime class become that calcium rich reservoir for self-healing you know I called it a lime class or a calcium rich environment but I think reservoir definitely sounds fancier and what the suggestion is is that this was done as a hot mix that the only way to create this was a cat a purpose purposeful catastrophic reaction that was um, kicked off by using quicklime that had not been hydrated and it had to be a coarser quicklime um, and they even consider the documentation of hot mixing as part of this Roman technique now the the MIT mixes that we look at later on were set up to replicate this phenomena that we found in this section um, using modern cementitious formulations which it seems like we're, we're trying to make a jump too quickly I feel like there should have been two separate papers this first one analyzing maybe five more sites ten more sites or four more sites or nine more sites focusing on you know trying to replicate or see if this concept was replicated um, and then the second paper was okay now we've seen it We've seen the, 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 the consistency in size. Now we're going to try to, to change the state of the art, state of the practice to replicate what the Romans done. Um, and, and, you know, it's like, a, it's like the difference between a good movie and a bad movie. Like there are some movies that I've watched in the past where they've just tried to include too much. Um, and then, you know, you don't build the characters, you don't build the storyline. I feel the same thing here. Um, so going into the, you know, going up from the micro to macro, they go into this fantastic series of tests that just enough wasn't done. But, oh, I love, L-O-V-E, love these tests. We do something similar to this. MIT, MIT uses, uh, or mixes set out to replicate the phenomena. So the mixes I'm not in love with. So you have one mix that was quicklime free and one mix that had quicklime in it. Now, I, 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 I want to be honest, I don't understand how many mixes they did. They talk about multiple percentages or two percentages, and then of course without the quicklime. Um, but it, it just seems to be, you know, um, lost in the detail. And even when you look at the, the supplemented data, it doesn't go into a lot about that. Um, so what they do here, and Whitney just walked in, so I'd love to include her on this, at least just to talk to you, Whit, um, is they start with a, what looks like a two inch diameter puck, maybe a three inch diameter puck of concrete, that's maybe two inches tall, and then they create a fracture, they create a manufactured break, then they piece the concrete back together, that has the quick lime in it, which when they mix the quick lime into the standard concrete here, these are the MIT mixes, mm -hmm. they create these lime class, these calcium rich environments that could then be later used for self healing. So they crack the concrete, they put it together, and then what they do is they, they put water flow behind the crack and they keep that water flow going for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And they measure the change in the resistance of that water flow without the quick lime and with the quick line. And what they find is with the quick line, not only is there reduced water flow, which goes back to self-healing, but when they look inside this crack, which of course is something you know, I want us to do for, for self-healing, um, they're able to find this gel that's been created. And when they investigate this gel, this, you know, this healed crack, they see a a Raman shift that is um, 
uh, completely filled with the newly precipitated mineral phase and was identified as calcite. You know, so, I mean, that's really cool. My only problem is... I, I, I don't have any problems with this, actually. I, I, I like this. This is probably like... Yeah, I think it's a great freaking test. So they use SEM and EDS to look at this, and they can find this gel. Um, so, you know, with that, they, they also do some shrinkage tests that, was it 90 days and 365 days? And what they found is at the early ages that the short-term shrinkage was overcome by using this quicklime concept, but the long-term really didn't have any shrinkage benefits. Um, it was really just the sealing of that crack. Um, in this next discussion portion, or in this discussion portion, they open up with the previous studies that make reference to calcium aluminate silicate hydrate is the dominant phase in the relic lime class. But this new research shows that while these lime class do have calcium aluminate silicate hydrate around the periphery as that diffusion barrier, it's calcite dominant. It's a calcium rich environment that's in there. And that's like the most important part. Um, and especially outside of this, the discovery is, is, I mean, it's just, I feel like I'm watching John Carter. Like there's just so many plot twists to this, but there's also different types of calcium carbonate. And based on these different types of calcium carbonate, we can say what was the humidity of the environment which they were created. And uh, I just don't know. That just seems like bullshit to me. And I would love for somebody to, to explain to me how that's not artistic hand-waving. It's just, trust me, I'm MIT. Like, that, that seems like what this paper is. You know, trust me, I'm Steven Spielberg. I, I wouldn't make a bad movie. Trust me, I'm MIT. I wouldn't make a, a paper that goes all over the place. Um, hot mixing, the impact on the hydrating environment. So they, they define hot mixing again. Um, the water demand, the setting time. You know, this is something we've all seen when you're using quick lime and concrete. But what I find here is they get into that M&M hard candy show. And this is actually definition three. Like, they, they, they keep repeating themselves. Um, and now they, they go into, again, this production process of lime class, you know, going into what I've already described as that coarser quick lime particles. But again, this was already talked about like three or four pages ago. Um, and then, of course, they make the connection to modern mixes. So it, it, it seems like, you know, somebody didn't read this all the way through um, being so tough. Being so tough on them, why they? So the takeaway from this third section of our discussion is the self-healing or the crack healing observed, which I agree. You know, if they saw if they saw a reduction in 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 water flow, I mean that 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 proves or that that doesn't prove that just points to a certain direction that needs much more research. Um, you know, they, I believe they go into the volume change associated with lime cycle transformations. And that's something that I had said earlier that, you know, many companies have been using in concrete for, for decades. So I don't understand how this, you know, they, they get a patentable um, concept out of this because that, that would be an obvious innovation of existing technology. Um, so, you know, one of the things I also found uh, confusing was whether or not it was two mixes or not. They they talk about more than two mixes, but the data that they show is really only for two mixes. Um, one of the things that they say in here, which just set me off, and it says it over here on the left-hand side, it's the one, two, third paragraph, where they say, Roman mortar production based on historical evidence remains ambiguous. Like, wh what is the word ambiguous again, Whitney? Like, yeah, I'm going to look it up. Undefined, like, undefined. Open to more than 
one interpretation having double meaning. Unclear or inexact because of a choice between... Okay. So, to me, what that means is all the mixes and everything that they say, been saving, saying, maybe yes, right. maybe BS. We just don't know. We just... And that, to me, like, fucking... Somebody should have taken that section out. Like, maybe yes, maybe BS... If you've never seen, the, these people have never seen that TV show called The Good Place sure. with Kristen Bell. Sure. Maybe yes, maybe BS. Sure. You know, your dissertation was 3,000 pages. On page 150, you say, and on the other hand, this might not be true. Sure. Um, yeah, and then they go into referencing the use of ground line to prevent damage to fresco paging. Like, at this point, they're reaching. Like, they didn't want to go out. They didn't want to ask for funding to go to other places. Again, it's hard to ask for funding. But this is a reach uh, not doing more work. And this started pissing me off. And again, they go into this definition of hot mixing and lime again. So now this is time number four. Um, this is the best part of the paper. I think you should scrap... 80% of the paper and this is one part of that 20% and this is my favorite part and this is the explaining the, the lime cast process using rudimentary illustrations a proposed mechanism for self-healing I think whoever did this section bravo well done I mean the process go is, goes through hot mixing to creating a calcium rich lime class to self-healing like, this is just a very good process, and I'm excited to refer to this figure right here in the future. Discussion number five, um, you know, the, there was another suggestion that hot mixing accelerated pozzolanic reaction. Uh, okay, I guess. Yeah, because we increased temperature by two, three hundred degrees at those local sites, sure. And, of course, they make the jump from Roman concrete versus modern concrete using hot mixing and how we can use that in modern day concrete for self-healing, which I get it. I, it's, it's a great idea. I mean, they even go into how the pozzolanic reaction will be able to re react in these cracks over time because you're creating this, this saturated calcium rich environment with moisture and blah, blah, blah. And you'll, You'll even have this recrystallization of the calcium carbonate, which is a strength-bearing structure. I, I love this. I love this. But they're, they're trying to, to correlate it to other things that were designed and even show that you know there are short and long-term benefits for this, and I'm not buying it. You know, they, they, they go into self-healing for 0 0.20 millimeter cracks, which is great. Um, I, I, it just, they make a good case that self-healing materials lay dormant, um, but you lose that message. Like that explanation was a minute and 35 seconds. And to go off that great rudimentary illustration, look at this. What I just went through about the the discussion in different limes and the reaching for the 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 the, the similar concepts in frescoes or the message is lost. It's almost like painting on bullshit. So my takeaway from this last part of this discussion is Roman methods can be used in modern concrete. And, and you know, I feel like they go into what does this mean for practical means, but like I have said throughout this entire paper, I think this is a, a irresponsible stretch that they're making to suggest that based off of their research from two mixes that they did in the lab, and one set of samples that they took from some place in Italy that we should change the state of the practice, I would even suggest that it's a jump to suggest you can even get a patent off of this. But again, I'm not an expert in that. Um, so the takeaway for this, 
um, in the materials and methods, which I'm not going to go into as much because it's it, it's a lot of detail at nauseum on the equipment that they use, the software they use. But what they do go into is that the two goals of this work was multi-scale investigation of Roman concrete, which I believe they did. Um, they also set out to extract design formulas from Roman concrete from modern concrete. I don't think they did that. I don't think they did that. I think they just used common methods that folks have been using for a while to use quick lime and concrete. Um, I, I, I do believe there's some good information for folks who want to try to recreate their work. I think it would be interesting at the University of Utah, U of U, who did the saltwater, you know, unraveling mystery discovery of Roman concrete. Um, to rerun this, and I, I don't think it would be a bad idea to run around Robin. Uh, you know, extending this this concept out. There's a wonderful academy in Rome that you know has a six to eight, uh, eleven month um, uh, master's program or graduate work that will pay for U.S. citizens to do this type of research um, in Italy in Rome. Um, okay, so. Materials and methods takeaway. Oh, yeah. So last materials and methods. It went through the the EDS, the SCM, um, the XRD. Here we go into Raman spectroscopy. The equipment, the samples, the methods. Again, what I like the most about this was the self healing experiments. I flipping love these, and we're gonna try to. We <laughs> I reached out to the folks at MIT to see if we could pay them to run these. And I don't think I'm going to get a, a response response from them. Um, what I did notice that not only the petrographic analysis was outsourced, um, but the, the sample preparation was outsourced too. And I respect that. Um, I, I, I don't mind doing the same thing, especially if they're, if they are, um, you know, rare samples or difficult to get samples. Um, all in all, this wasn't an inexpensive project. Um, I like the fact that it was a a, a partial fellowship funding. Um, that that it was. It doesn't seem like it was taken from government spending, um, which I I really like. I am curious where the remainder of funding is. Um, I did see that there were patents filed for modern lime cast process. Um, I'm going to be interested in reading that when that becomes available um, to review because, I, I, like I said, I believe this is a obvious innovation of existing technology. But, hey, I, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. Um, positive takeaways. I felt like there were some sections that were well illustrated. Uh, I believe that there was a good multi-scale research project. Um, the, the self-healing process with the Lyme casts, uh, the self-healing tests, as well as the self-healing illustration, um, were award-winning. And I, I, I would be, I, I would be willing to put that section, that specific, um, figure, I think it was figure four, up for an award, figure four, figure five. Uh, I liked it that much. Um, oh. So there's, hey, everybody makes mistakes. So um, negative takeaways from this, over-exaggeration of the results. Um, you know, there's some language in here that needs to be checked, like the, the, the title that we went into on the mechanic insights, the intuitive approach to this physical um, review. I mean, none of that was done. I guess intuitive because you didn't do enough research. Maybe that was the right word to use, and you, you know, Freudian slip there. Um, definitely an over exaggeration of results. Um, talk about what you measured. You know, I remember years ago during my my proposal for my PhD, uh, I did uh, compressive strength breaks at seven and twenty eight day, and I was, you know, wrote a paper on the you know molecular impact of nanosilica and how it changed up the silicone phases. And my advisor was like, dude, you just did compressive strength breaks. Talk about compressive strength breaks. You can't jump to, you know, changes in Q0s through Q2s when you're doing compressive strength. And I, I think that's what might have happened here. 
um, is that they started going down a path that might have been more hand-waving than science. Um, include more samples. Um, if this was private funding, um, go on a vacation. You know, different locations in the 5 million square miles that make up the Roman Empire and run some freaking more mixes. Two mixes is not nearly enough to prove a point. Altogether, I'm giving you a C plus on this. Um, and why a C plus? Uh, Whitney asked me why I didn't give you a D minus. Um, it was those. It was a well done multi scale research project. I was a little upset there weren't more samples. There should have been more samples, especially of the, for the suggestions that you make. Um, and then what brought you up to the other portion of the C plus was that self-healing process. I can't say enough about that. That illustration, the description, whoever did that, they saved the paper. Well done. So, uh, yep, that's all we have time for. That's a pretty long section there. Jeez, OP, 66 minutes. Um, if you have any questions, concrete concerns, please reach out to us. We've got a bunch more information on our YouTube channel that goes into many different sciences of concrete that unravel the mystery of. Um, and I, I hope you enjoyed this. You know, I like putting these together and I do this for the audience. And, and remember, this is my opinion. And I'm, I'm professional in the field. Um, but I am a, a, in a very specific field that maybe I'm not seeing um, the message as it was intended to deliver. So as a, a message out to the authors, I would be excited to talk to you guys. Ah, shit, I'll buy the triple boba and the, the beignets with Nutella and, and the coffee. Um, so we can have a chat about this and help me understand what I'm not seeing. So thanks for joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. Go concrete. Beat asphalt.